Our hearts need to change. What is our calling right here in the midst of Nineveh? What is our place? Who? Who do we believe? Who do we believe would never listen? us. Who have we written off? Maybe it's enemy. Maybe it's neighbor. Maybe it's that new kind of speaking person that lives in our neighborhood. It's from some country we've never heard of. Who is it that we don't believe would listen today. I tell you, friends, we put way too much stock in our voices and not enough faith in what God's voice can speak through us. See, I believe I believe every Sunday when I get to that place, when I get down here, when I'm, I'm in the nitty gritty part, that's what this means right down here when I'm getting down here. You have to figure that out, right? Nitty gritty time. When I get to this place, that God really does have a message for us. A message of grace, of love, of reconciliation, of it's not too late. You can turn, you can turn toward God and God will wrap his arms around you. If you turn toward God, friend, neighbor, acquaintance, person I've written off, if you'll turn toward God, God will turn toward you and he will have mercy. He will even have mercy on the people we don't want him to have mercy on. In fact, I think especially the people we don't want him to have mercy on. He will love us no matter what. But He will love through us in spite of us. We have this wonderful gift called the Word of God. We have this wonderful thing that is so powerful we don't give it credit. We don't Give it its due. That there's something about the word of the Lord that is much bigger than we are. And that it will speak for itself to the hearts that are ready to hear. But who can hear if there's no one speaking? I guess we'll find out. Did you listen to that? Are you paying attention? Do you believe that actually God could say something through you? Oh, I hope you get a burr in your saddle. I hope that some morning you're awake like I was this morning at 4 o'clock worrying about how this was going to come across. And try to figure out what to say one more time. Because it just never ends. It never ends. And I hope that burr gets under your blanket and rubs you in ways that you've got to pay attention. I hope you end up in the belly of a fish for three days and three nights. I hope that you get burped out on the shore in the place where God needs you to be. I hope I hope that we as a church take seriously what we've been given. And we've been given a lot. And I'm not talking about stuff. I'm talking about the real gifts. 
For those of you who didn't make it to the garden yesterday, right? The real gets happened. I got to nail in stuff with people from all over the community over here. We put down lots of black cloth. There's one thing they figured I could do. They let me put down the black cloth. They don't let me design anything. They don't let me build anything. But they do let me put down the black cloth. And I'm sure one of these days I'll work up the compost. Okay? You gotta work up to that, that thing. The compost is complicated. But the word of God happened yesterday in the garden. People were welcomed and we worked together and we became family together. And we spoke with each other and we broke bread pizza with each other. And we drank out of the same spigot. And it was good. You listen to church? That may not be where you're going to serve, but there could be lots of boards over there on the fifth, and you're going to need to write your name down because God is calling you. God is calling you. God's calling each and every one of us to put our name down, to stand for something, to do something, to be something for somebody else. And when we do that, others are blessed, but we're blessed doubly. Because now I know that not only has God loved me, but God loves you through me. And that's a miracle. Because I know there is no way except by the grace of God that I should be standing. And there's no way but by the grace of God that you should be sitting there. That's a pretty good word, isn't it? The grace of God. So where are you going to fit in? Well, I understand there's a ship sailing from Tarshish. Want to take it? If you know the story, you know what I'm talking about. Or we can turn and we can take the Word of God to people who need to turn with us. And they will find the miracle of God's presence. They'll put on sackcloth and ashes. They'll repent. They will turn toward God. In the midst of it, they'll probably save us. Let's pray. Precious God, thank you for the Jonas of our life. Those who've come and help us turn toward you. Help us not to be so reluctant, but to finally get it and turn toward you. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I really want the church to listen to this. Because if we do, we're going to get real busy. But then if we do, you will bless us. So help me to repent. Help me to turn my heart, my mind, my eyes, and all of me toward you. And in doing so, Lord, roll up my sleeves and get to work with some awesome people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're not a member of First Adventist Church and you would like to be, we still have water in our baptism. We didn't use it all day. If you've not been baptized, we can baptize you. If you're a member of another church and you'd like to join this one, we accept your profession of faith in your other church. and Your baptism is good here. We'll ask you some Methodist questions. If you want to be a part of the kingdom of God, just stand up and sing the hymn.
Listen to his voice, for he has a place for you. To understand as we sing. doing vacation Bible school as a younger pastor was Father Abraham. The reason I like Father Abraham is because I got all people to use to do it. We're not going to do it today, aren't you, man? But there's that one part where you turn around and sit down. It's at the end of the song, by the way. But I always love watching everybody in the church do a little pirouette. Kind of practice. Maybe y'all ought to do that right now. Just make a big turn. Go on. <laughs> 